we're going to do a real quick within group or within subjects one way ANOVA also called a repeated measures ANOVA in SPSS one thing that is different from a regular ANOVA where everybody has to be in a categorical variable this one each recording each time phase gets its own variable in SPSS that's just the way it works okay so but yeah it's not going to be that hard so let's switch over to SPSS I've already named them, right? Initial, week two, week four. Remember, no spaces in the name category. Labels, we don't need labels. Pretty self-explanatory. But we did have to tell the computer that they were scale variables, right? Just regular numbers. Okay. So you know, let me go ahead and cut and paste the values in here. <laughs> so for initial, it would be these. Control C. Control V, Control C, Control V. It's like playing the piano. Control C, Control V. So I have my data. I'm going to save this. I strongly recommend you guys save these a lot. All right, I saved it. So I always look, make sure everything looks okay. Right, no decimals. Don't like decimals. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. This one right here within Subject Factor Name, uh, you, can, you might get a lot of error messages here because if you don't clear your data, it, it like I use time all the time. So this time I'm going to put Training, okay? And there were three recorded levels. I'm going to add that. But now you have to tell the computer which three do you want to compare. And it's kind of easy. That's going to be the first one. And week two is the second one. Week four is the last one. And let's see. We don't want model. We're not going to make any contrasts or plan comparisons. Plots. I do like to see the means plots. So I'm going to click the training over on the horizontal. I'm going to add it. We're going to go to options. We're going to bounce this over to the display means for, right? Overall, it's everybody. Make sure the descriptive statistics is picked. Estimates of effect size, power, 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 homogeneity variance. That's always important. Click continue. And we should be good to go. Keep your fingers crossed. Click OK. And here's our output. Let me get it cleaned up for you here. Okay, here is the SPV output for this data file. This tells you how many different levels you had, right? How many recordings. And here's the means of each group, standard deviations of each group. Now in, it should always be the same number because everybody is in every trial, okay? So, and again, with, with repeated measures, each individual serves as their own control group. That's why we always give them a pre-test or a pre-measurement. Okay, so now depending on which book you read, um, the the F test that you want to look at is the Wilkes Lambda. I'll say that again. The Wilkes Lambda F test is the one that we're going to look at. You can look at others, but um, the main book that we go by always uses the Wilkes Lambda for all repeated measures ANOVA. So here is the test statistic. Here is the F that was generated by the Wilkes Lambda test. And degrees of freedom, right? It's just one minus the number of groups. Here is the significance level that it generated. It is not under 0.05, therefore we cannot reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the data does not support that the training was effective at increasing the number of push-ups these guys could do. Okay, here's our at a squared. So roughly, this is saying that about 76% of the variance in the number of push-ups could be explained by the training. Okay, three out of four, eh, that's not bad. But we have to look at the power. Uh-oh, right? The power is low. We here, where, where we practice, we expect the power to be 0.8 or above. So the power statistic is kind of agreeing with the significance statistic. 
And they're both saying that the data is not supporting what we're looking for. Okay, so eh. so we did not find significance. But let's look at the, the test for sphericity. It's Mouchley's test right here for sphericity. So this works just like a Levine's test. You got to look at this significance here. If it's less than 0.05, then you violated the assumption of sphericity, but we did not. But it really doesn't make any difference because we don't have significance. So what else am I looking for? Test? Nah, don't need that. We don't ever look at the between subjects because it's a within group test. Okay, so this, this really doesn't make any difference here. And here's the plot of the means. Okay, this is where they originally were. This is their... their pre-test mean and their post-test so it does go up but the test the, the it's just not the data is not strong enough to to allow you to reject the null okay so that's basically what it's saying and that's how you run this test that's it mgz out mad guy zero speaks to